Hello YouTube viewers. Welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode we're going to take a look at battery powered rockets. So are they real or magical? Let's look into it. So right now uh, this is all the news because of this company known as Rocket Lab which has successfully become the first company to put a orbital rocket in orbit using a electric powered rocket engine. So it is an American company basically their paperwork says it's America based and however it's uh, running from New Zealand not government based it's privately funded but it's a New Zealand based uh, subsidiary and you have to understand they are a very small company and they are targeting small satellite market so let's dive right into it so all this idea of battery powered rocket you have to understand this it's not going to space using battery power all it is doing is driving the rocket engine using battery power rather than gas generators so as in my last episode of spacex i said like spacex figured out some way to make a cheap effective successful gas generator now gas generators are very complicated because on one end the t- uh, end that is uh, rotating that we call the impeller not turbine basically that side is going as hot as like you know uh, 2 to 3000 degrees celsius however the cold side is going as cold as whatever the your fuel is or like in this case liquid oxygen is so you can see this causes a lot of metallurgic problems and turbocharger the rock gas generator and all these things combined make rocket engine very expensive everything else in the rockets are not that expensive comparatively speaking but that whole idea of that turbo pump is very expensive so they are simplifying that all they are doing is replacing the turbo pumps the gas generator with turbo pump still there but it's completely sealed and is being driven by an electric pump now the motors that they are using is roughly 50 horsepower and each engine unit has two motors one for kerosene one for oxygen this is done uh, i think mostly for size reason otherwise like they have to might have to make a big rocket engine uh, big motor pardon me big motor and this also allows them to tune the mixture basically which will allow them to control the specific impulse so let's say if they are going through max q they might be able to reduce the kerosene content or if they are going through like you know if they need more uh, lean burn basically they can control the oxygen content so this is their approach they have instead of having gas generator they have two motors driving the oxygen pump driving kerosene pump this is their whole idea now on top of that on top of making motors which drastically reduce their cost they are 3d printing this whole damn thing like not every single bolt and nut in this but majority of this thing is made in 3d printer using electron beam so basically they have a vacuum chamber where they have a lot of powder and that powder is melting uh, using electron beam not laser so they are using electron beam melting technology so benefit of that is they can 3d print this whole engine in roughly 24 hour so and i am just meaning the components they will print it and they will assemble everything else so basically they will have a engine ready from computer cad files to fully functional actual engine in less than week less than a week they will have a full fledged engine which is ludicrously fast and as i already mentioned they are using oxygen and kerosene their specific impulse as in like how good is their mileage is it's uh, on sea level it's around uh, 311 and on vacuum of space it's 343 which is kind of okay to good it's not great but it's good so their design is more or less similar to spacex design basically they are using two stage now they have recently added a option known as 2.5 stage which is a kick stage they are adding like this stage is a kick stage uh, the reason why it's not a full independent stage because this is only used to circularize the orbit like basically they are firing in a ballistic trajectory to circularize the orbit so it goes around the earth and you know orbit is stable they are using this so that's why it's not classified as three stage rocket this is just a kick stage this is like the, they will allow you to launch multiple payloads at different different uh, apogees and things like that and to pressurize their fuel tank they are using the same thing helium uh, as used by spacex and they need nine engines for first stage like this is the first stage they have nine engine and they have one engine in their second stage literally like spacex however that nine engine needs one megawatt now if you read any of their documentation they will say it provides one megawatt of power do not think their battery bank can actually provide one megawatt hour power basically they need 1 megawatt that's absolutely true however they need it less than 3 minutes so their battery bank can be as small as 50 kilowatt so don't expect that their battery bank itself is 1 megawatt it's just that to drive this pump to max capacity to like with all the electronics needed for that they're burning upwards of 1 megawatt 
so but they are only doing it for three minutes so don't it's not like you know their battery bank can run a city and they have one vacuum optimized engine now the only unique thing about that vacuum optimized engine is that during mid flight while they are going like you know once they have done the staging one the first stage has been discarded once they are send, you know ascending using second stage in mid flight they will dump the discharge battery that will happen generally like if you see the launch uh, that will happen generally at 630 seconds more or less 5 10 seconds plus or minus but from launch it's not uh, when the second engine is uh, on it's just they will dump the battery it's almost like dumping the payload fairing to you know get more uh, basically uh, you want to get more kick out of your actual fuel so dumping batteries that are used used up now it's uh, quite a unique way how they are trying to get more kilograms into payload as you can see the battery banks are independent like uh, once they discharge one they will throw it away once they discharge the other they will throw that away and they uh, this kick stager is running on monopropellant it's not a two part mixture it's a basically a single thing and they are not specifying what they are using they're just calling it a grill monopropellant however the thrust factor for those who are interested is 120 newtons so it's a very low power it's just there to circulate the orbit and you know allow them more flexibility it's not there as a like you know they can send it to geostationary orbit so this is their design what are their pros of using this design this small infrastructure they are actually cheap now many of you have said spacex is cheap which is absolutely true it's cheap compared to ULA which could charge upwards of 400 million dollars for a similar launch and SpaceX can uh, charge you less than 80 million dollars now this puppy can go down to 6 million now per kg be mindful of this per kg to orbit this is very expensive it's expensive than SpaceX however not everybody has the capital cost or the need for sending you know 20 tons to orbit so using them actually allows them a uh, very very low price 6 million is like so low that there are many millionaires who can just spend this amount of money just for drone. So second, they, uh, the satellite, the maximum satellite they can send size wise, uh, as in weight wise, is 220 kg, which is okay. And they are generally trying to keep within 150 kgs. And they can launch multiple CubeSats. Now CubeSat has become the, you know, the next hot thing in the space industry. It has revolutionized everything, especially because of miniaturization of electronics, gyroscopes, everything that is in your mobile phone actually is needed for satellites. So only thing added is solar panels and whatever instruments they need for that specific purpose. So CubeSat, as you can see, is uh, basically, it's a standardized architecture. So the architecture is one cube is 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. So that's one U unit. Then you have two U, then you have three U, then you have two, uh, two U into three U. So basically like a rectangular. So basically there is a standardized structure and uh, it's been going on for quite some while and this uh, right now is changing the whole world. This is what uh, ISRO launched, 108 of them, uh, 104 of uh, CubeSats. And uh, you can, you might think they are quite useless. That used to be true when they were like, you know, first introduced. However, with the miniaturization of electronics and ad advancement in optical cameras, they are uh, quite priceless nowadays for uh, what we call Earth imaging systems. So they can launch multiple CubeSats and that's their crucial party because the rocket is uh, flat out thrown it's a use and throw rocket they designed the whole architecture is designed around making the rocket from cad file to actual rocket very quick like the engine itself was used to be the most complicated they narrowed it down into one week the rocket itself i don't think would take more than few months so they are from if they receive order i need a rocket they will build that rocket very quickly very fast and from order like let's say i placed an order okay i want to send my cubesat this is their crucial part this is their niche market they will say okay i'll launch it in next two months if you go to spacex they will be like okay i'll i'll take your uh, you know take your order i'll wait i'll see if there is another uh, buyer that will you know use my rocket for big payload and on top of that i'll just add your small rocket like you know piggy bagging as it's called this is why this whole company exists like they cannot compete with big rockets price wise they simply cannot they cannot make their rockets very big so all things considered all they are doing is like because nowadays cubesats are used as a proof of concept by big companies like this one i'm showing you is the nasa one uh, they need to launch cubesat very quickly and now of course let's say you have a big satellite launch already piled up you can be like okay just you know piggyback this also 
many companies don't have that luxury many uh, many companies don't want to like you know wait around for that this is their whole unique selling point that they will launch your satellites cubesats as quickly as possible so these are the pros of it but there must be some cons and yes they are limited to leo basically low earth orbit i haven't seen any data sheet that they are even trying to go to higher than 500 kmps however they uh, they will be used by a company that is trying to go to the moon so they can go to the moon only problem would be the payload size would be relatively very small and they might not even go there in 3 days they might actually take longer there is another method to go to moon rather than you know just using boost thrust you can but it takes uh, it uses gravitational gravity of earth to you know boost its orbit but it takes very long time like upwards of uh, days many days could be taken to 6 month so it can go to the moon but payload size would be ridiculously small it's, it's not even achieving anything as small as like you know you can't even send a cat to the moon so suffice to say is very small so don't get uh, fooled by the like okay this rocket will go to the moon it's just a small very small minuscule payload that will go there now their total capacity of the payload is also very low it's 150 kg now cubesat itself is very light however if you want to launch a lot of them then the weight goes up this is their limiting factor now they can't do bulk launch of cubesats and i said cubesats are becoming uh, the next big thing in space industry and isro's this rocket has launched 100 plus cubesats in the orbit in one launch and spacex can also do a lot of them 56 is very common very common this is i'm just showing you one one was tried in you know iss launch they are launching 3 4 at one so it's quite common for cubesats to be launched as in like you know 30 40 satellites at once they can't do this now this is the red part that i'm showing here that they can't really make the rocket big you have to understand that their biggest hurdle is battery technology as i said they don't actually have one megawatt hour battery bank or they might have like 50 60 kilowatt now you might be like okay let's make them bigger it does not get lighter as it as the fuel being used up so over time if you keep making them bigger and bigger of course they have some leg room it's not like this is the biggest rocket they can build of course more optimized engine design more efficient engine design and more uh, you know streamlined processing they might actually get more kgs into low earth orbit however they will not never able to achieve this there is a reason why we don't use batteries for uh, rockets flat out like because it does not get lighter as you are going up so they cannot make big rocket even if you add strap ons and all that in the end you will end up making it so expensive people will be like okay i'll just use spacex so these are the cons of rocket lab so i hope you got a deeper understanding of this battery battery based rocket and i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please like if you didn't know worry about it dislike it and leave a comment what we want to see in the next episode of rocket monday and subscribe press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching